We rolling? We're rolling. Hey, and welcome back to Hootie Style Channel. This is the episode that I think a lot of you have been waiting for. How to get your very own Jarvis. Now, we were initially supposed to start by showing you how to install and run Google Assistant SDK and Google's Push to Talk demo, which is something that really can be used with your smart mirror in any sensible way but we wanted to show you how complex things are with that SDK, the lack of support, and how Google have neglected to update the related guides. After that, we were going to show you how to install the more useful MMM Google Assistant, which is a Google Assistant Magic Mirror module made by developer Cedric Bugzunet, Dupont. The idea was that by installing the SDK first, you'd realize how much work the developer must have put into this module and how painless and smooth he made things and that you'd ultimately appreciate it more. However, as we were almost done making this episode, I came to the conclusion that it just became too complex and frankly irrelevant to show you the SDK and Google's demo. So we started over from scratch to keep this episode straight to the point and as smooth as possible for you. With that said though, any thanks you have should go to the developer Bugzunet, as I'm just a conveyor of information here today. And please also remember that things change often with this type of software. And what I'm about to show you today may not be up to date in a few months. I had to relearn a lot of things for this tutorial because the processes have changed so much since I got Project Elizabeth running. Therefore, I highly recommend you always read the developer wiki carefully. And in case you have questions, ask in the developer forums. Now, before we start, if you have come to this episode unprepared, I highly recommend you start by watching episode three and five. You are going to need your mirrors set up and running before starting with this stuff. This is the 102. But if you're just here to watch my beautiful face talking, then you're excused. Carry on. Okay, some prerequisites first. For this tutorial, you need a Gmail account, a Raspberry Pi 3B or better, Raspberry Pi OS 11 32-bit. Do not try this with the 64-bit OS. I warn you, you'll run into problems. And finally, a large cup of good tea. FYI, I'm running this on my test platform, which is a Raspberry Pi 4 with Raspberry Pi OS 11 32 bit. To make things less cluttered, we're going to divide things up a bit. Number one, we're going to set up a project on Google Cloud platform so that Google gives you access to their voice assistant. Number two, we're going to make sure we have the right versions of necessary software installed on our Raspberry Pi. Number three, we're going to install MMM Google Assistant. Number four, we are going to install a necessary requirement called Gateway which is a central broker software of some sort. And number five, we're going to install EXT Detector, which is a module extension and the hot word detector to wake up the assistant. I hope you got your tea ready. Let's go. Start by clicking link number one in the description of this episode. It will take you to Google Cloud Platform, where you will have to log in using your Gmail account. After agreeing to some terms, you will be greeted by this view. High up and a little bit to the left, you have this split button that says select a project. Clicking it will open this window where you most likely don't have any projects. So go ahead and press new project and give your project a name. I'm gonna call this one project like and subscribe. By the way, if you aren't getting notified about our new episodes, then you need to click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you'll always know as soon as the next episode is out. Okay, back to work. Now press create and wait for it to finish doing its thing. Click select project to activate your new project. And yes, the following view might look overwhelming, but don't be scared, I got your back. In the menu on the left, you'll find APIs and Services. Click it and then go to Enabled APIs and Services. We are going to 
add the Google Assistant API to the list of APIs that are enabled for our project. So go up and press Enable APIs and Services and then search for Google Assistant. Now click and enable this API. Going back to the list of APIs, we can now see that Google Assistant API is enabled for our project. Next, we are going to the OAuth consent screen. Here you will choose external and then create. Name your app MMM Google Assistant. There are two more fields in this page that are necessary to fill in. Type your Gmail addresses in both these fields, then save and continue. The scopes page is not necessary, so just click save and continue again. We are going to add ourselves as a tester, so just press add users and then type your Gmail address once again followed by add and then save and continue. If you get any pop-up saying ineligible accounts not added or something similar, just press close and you'll be fine, trust me. Next, we're going to credentials, then click create credentials and choose the OAuth client ID. Application type here is web application and let's name it once again MMM Google Assistant. Now this part is very important. Under authorized redirect URIs, we need to add a link to the developer Bugzunet server for authentication later on. You can copy the address from link number two in the video description below. Add it and press create. Now you have the option to download the credentials by pressing download JSON. Okay. Do it, mm -hmm. do it. Keep it safe, we're going to need it. Press OK, go back to OAuth consent screen and press publish app. Now click link number three in the video description and this will take you to the activity controls for your Gmail account. The time has come to sell your soul. I mean, give your permission for Google to take part of some of your activities. This will open up the possibilities for your assistant to achieve more complex things than just to tell you the time. So go ahead and tick those two boxes and agree to all the stuff that you can't really say no to. As a band-aid for all the intrusion, you can set Google to auto-delete all data older than three months. So let's do that. You're now done with part one of this tutorial. Sip some tea, cause we got a lot more to do. Okay, from this point on, I need you to be on your Raspberry Pi. So start by copying the credentials file you downloaded earlier to your Raspberry Pi and change its long client secret name to credentials.json. Now leave it, we're coming back to it later. First, we're going to make sure we have the right version of NPM and Node installed. So open up a terminal and type sudo npm install g npm at, and this is the version number, 6.14.15, and press enter. And let it do its thing. Now type sudo npm install g n and press enter. Follow up with sudo n 14.19.3 and enter and let it finish. Once it's done, let's check the version number of npm and node by typing npm double dash version and node double dash version respectively. You should now have these versions installed. If not, I recommend two aspirin, a night with Google and some tissues for tears. If everything has gone well so far, then congratulations, you have reached level three. Now let's install the golden module, MMM Google Assistant. Open up your web browser on the Raspberry Pi and type the address from link number four in the video description. This is the developer wiki. There are tons of great information here but I'm just going to jump to the parts needed to get you started. But you should read through this once you start customizing stuff. On the menu to the right, click MMM Google Assistant and scroll down to the guide section. Click installation. 
As you can see, there are some prerequisites here that we have already addressed, so we should be all good. Under the auto install section, you can find the lazy man's commands. Just copy this text with the button to the right. Now open a terminal and paste the text you copied and press enter. Now call everyone you know and tell them to subscribe to this channel while the Raspberry Pi is doing all the hard work. Once it's done, go back to the guide section and press configuration. This page is packed with all the options and possibilities you have for customization. To keep things as straightforward as possible though, I'm just going to copy this minimal sample here. Open your file explorer and navigate to the magic mirror folder and then the config folder where the config.js file is located. Open it and paste the text under the module section. You should already know how this works, so I'm not going to explain it any further. If you don't know how this works, you should get a trophy for making it this far. Now go watch episode 5. Moving on, let's grab that credentials.json file that we copied earlier and move it to the MMM Google Assistant folder. After you've done this, go back to the terminal. Make sure you're in the MMM Google Assistant folder and type npm run token followed by enter. Press Y when you get the question. This will open a Google page asking you to log in with your Gmail account. This is Bugzunet's server authenticating you. Copy the code given to you and paste it into your terminal and press enter. You're now authenticated with a token. Google Assistant is ready and available for use. Final two steps, you can do this, but first... Okay, so we have Google Assistant ready but we can't quite use it the way we want to yet. We need a hot word detector, something that will listen for Jarvis, so it can activate the assistant. For this, we need to install a central broker software Bugzunet calls Gateway. If you scroll down the left menu, you can see the headline extended plugins. Here we can find the extension we need called ext detector and on top also the broker software called gateway. So go ahead and click that. We are going to do more lazy man's installs. Scroll down and copy the text and paste it into your terminal and press enter. When the installation is done, scroll down and copy the configuration text. Gateway is handled just like a module, so we need to add the configuration text to our config.js file. So let's do that. Okay, now this goes without saying, it is important to change username and password here before saving. The reason is that Gateway will allow you to access it remotely and gives you access to some cool options and possibilities. You can read more about it in the wiki. For this tutorial though, I'm not changing anything because this is my test platform and it will be wiped after this episode. Now save and exit. Congratulations, you have reached the fifth and final step of this tutorial. Let's celebrate that with some tea. All right, scroll down and click EXT detector. As you can see here, it will make it possible for you to use hot words like Hey Google, Jarvis, Computer, etc. Keep scrolling down to Lazy Man Land. You know the drill by now, copy the text and paste it into the terminal, followed by Enter. Press Y when the question comes up and sit back and think about what you're going to talk about with Jarvis when you finally get the chance. Now scroll down for the configuration sample. There are a lot of options here as well, so make sure you read this page later. For now though, let's just copy the default configuration into our config.js. This will give us Hey Google, OK Google and Jarvis hot words by default. Save your file and let's fire up Magic Mirror. Jarvis? What time is it? 8.31 p.m. And there you have it, your very own Jarvis. If you get problems along the way, Bugzunet is a great guy at giving support for his own code. 
The link to his support forum is in the description below. If your errors are not related to his code, then, um, well, two aspirin and you know the rest. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't forget about us. This is Uri, Hoodie Style Channel, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.